Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks War Gaming and welcome to our latest 8th edition 40k battle report. John's back with his towel and I am using my Space Wolves. Now my Space Wolves list that I'm taking is slightly different. So uh, shortly, me and Robin are off to Gibraltar again for No Retreat 5. John can't join us because of work commitments. Sucks to be John. Uh, but me and Robin are heading over to Gibraltar for what is an awesome tournament, an awesome four days, and can't wait. So I'm playtesting my list that I'm taking. Uh, it's my Space Wolves list. It's slightly different. I'm taking a Vindicare Assassin uh, because they're amazing, and why the hell wouldn't you? Uh, but yeah, it's kind of, let's tr see, try this out, see how it goes. Uh, John's running a fairly balanced tau list. Yeah, the usual fluffy tau list. Although I have discovered that with 2k to play with, you don't really get as many units this time around. No. So it's a slightly thinned out list uh, in eighth, but yeah, fairly fluffy, fairly light list. So I'm gonna get mullered basically by a tournament list, which will be enormous fun. No, I don't, it's, not, it's not a nasty tournament list. Tournament lists nowadays in eighth edition are, uh, what works, repeat and rinse and just spam it. Um, but that's not what I've done. So um, it's in my normal Space Wolves list with a slight tweak with a Vindicare Assassin in and a Land Raider because they're nails now. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. So the mission that we're doing is retrieval. So four objectives down on the board, uh, each worth three victory points. And we're doing Dawn of War deployment because that's what's being used in the tournament. Nor, um, in the tournament scene, there's a Eternal War and a Maelstrom mission run at the same time and a Tertiary as well, where you slay the Warlord for, um, first strike and line breaker. But we're not doing that. We're just gonna run an Eternal War mission just to keep it a bit more simple. So let's go take a look at the armies. Here is my 2k's worth of Tau, and we've got two HQ choices. It's a battalion uh, detachment. So we've got the commander, and he's got two Mark Light drones with him, and I've given him a drone controller. And the other HQ choice is Long Strike, uh, basically stock, but um, smart missile system replacing the gun drones that you might normally expect to find on that particular model. And then for the three troop choices, it's pretty basic. Um, three squads are five um, breaches each, and uh, one of them has a piranha as a transport with a seeker missile. And then we're very elite heavy in this list. So uh, the first elite is the um, ever-present Riptide uh, with uh, fusion blasters, and I've given him early warning override and stimulant injector. And their next set of elites is a squad of crisis suits. Uh, these guys, I have given them uh, plasma rifles each, and then uh, the leader's got a fusion blaster as well. I've given these guys a multi-tracker as well. A little hidden gem. Uh, if they all fire at the same target, they get plus one to their rolls to hit, which is really neat. Uh, same for the other squad behind. They've got a multi-tracker as well. Bit of a mixed load out there. Missile um, pods on each of those. And then there's one plasma rifle, there's one fusion blaster, and there's a burst cannon. So a bit of a mixed squad there. And then more elites. We've got two squads of four stealth suits. Um, with the uh, burst cannons and we've got the ghost keel with a uh, fusion blaster and a cyclic ion raker and um, then we've got a heavy support of course as well the heavy support is broadside with smart missile system just one of those guys today and then in the fast attack section there is one suicide piranha which you may have seen before uh, with a fusion blaster just to uh, to give anything with a bit of tough armor something to think about don't think it's going to be quite so effective in eighth but we're going to see how it pans out nonetheless so yeah there you go not so much for your 2k these days um so i've had to slim down from what i would normally take uh for a 2k list but uh, we'll let's see how it performs and it's particularly interesting to see how long strike performs as a uh, hq choice of course my warlord will still be the commander so this is my 2000 point tournament space wolf list running a spearhead detachment hq and warlord today i am taking my iron priest on an iron wolf this guy is equipped with a thunder hammer and a hellfrost pistol second hq choice i'm taking a rune priest this guy has a plasma pistol psychic powers he knows smite and jaws of the word wolf into troops i'm taking a five man gray hunter squad sergeant is upgraded to a power fist next troop choice is a Six man Grey Hunter squad again, Sergeant upgraded with a power fist. Into heavy support, 
I'm taking a Land Raider, two twin link last cannon sponsors and heavy bolters on this, into Elites. I'm taking a Wolfen Squad, three Frost Claws and two with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields. Second Elite Choice, exactly the same loadout for the second squad of Wolfen. Next Elite, I'm taking my Venerable Dreadnought with a uh, Blizzard Shield and Frost Axe. And fourth Elite Choice, I'm taking my Vindicare Assassin. So this guy will be sitting high up in a building somewhere, popping off characters hopefully. Fast attack, I'm taking a four-man Thunderwolf Cavalry Squad. In here there is a Power Fist and a Thunder Hammer and two Chainsaws, and they're all equipped with Storm Shields. And finally, dedicated transports, I am taking two Rhinos. The Tau have deployed all the way across the battlefield, the first of the Crisis suits hiding down behind the ruins of the building. We have the Hammerhead and we have the Broadside inside and on top of the building. We have the Riptide and the Piranha slap bang in the center of the battlefield. And then on the left hand flank, we have the Devilfish. We have a squad of Fire Warriors and the Ghost Keel, all hunkered down in the ruins of the old cathedral. There is one objective marker just on the corner. Space Wolves, Space Wolves again have deployed all the way across the battlefield. Vindicare Assassin is up. He has perfect line of sight across the battlefield, nice and high. Oh yes, Jonathan also put two stealth squads down on top of the landing platform as part of his infiltrate move. But they could get picked off by the Vindicare, maybe the Ghost Kill, the Riptide, something like that. Rhino with the Wolfen squad in. He's on the left-hand flank, ready to move up. The Grey Hunters and the Rune Priest here holding on to the first of my objectives. Second Rhino with the Wolfen in. Again, centre of the battlefield, looking at joining in, heading up as quickly as they can. Iron Priest, Dreadnought, Thunderwolf Cav, Land Raider, which is empty. On this side of the battlefield, we have the third of the objective markers there behind the old Imperial Bunker. And the fourth objective is here in this ruin, again being held on to by the second of my Grey Hunter squad. In reserve for the Tau, we have the Commander and we have Crisis Suit Squad. They will be coming in via the Manta deployment thingy that Tau can do. So Space Wolves finish deploying first. So it is them to go first, unless Jonathan can roll me a dice and seize the initiative, which he cannot. Land Raider and the Thunderwolf Cavalry and the Venerable Dreadnought have all started to move up the right hand flank. Slight moan. Thunderwolf Cav, Venerable Dreadnought, can't get up there, can't do that. I still think the Dreadnought should be able to pull himself up onto the top of that landing platform and smash face, but hey ho, he can't. Rhino and the second Rhino have started their movement up to this left-hand flank of the battlefield and the Grey Hunters and the Vindicare Assassin have all stayed still. Let's go shoot some stuff. The Land Raider has shot at the Riptide down there. I have got three wounds done on him. He's got 13 wounds in total. I've got three dice in my hand. They're D6 wounds each. Let's see how much damage you do to that Riptide. Not much, only six. Now, do I spend a command point and re-roll one of them? Yeah, let's do that. Spend one of my command points, re-roll it. That's better. Five, six, seven, eight, nine wounds. Nine wounds done to the Riptide. John, with his fill no pain for the uh, Riptide, managed to save three of the nine wounds, so he then took six. A little bit annoying. Um, that's it, pretty much. Nothing else can shoot. The la uh, Rhino down here went to shoot at the Fire Warrior squad, but it's plus two to hit because of some stupid tower rule, so he missed. The Vindicare Assassin up here hits on twos, shot at the broadside all the way down there, rolled a one. Obviously, I'd already spent a command point as well. Excellent. So that is pretty much everything for Space Wolves. So the first Crisis Suit Squad have made their way up onto the building there with a line of sight down onto the Land Raider down here. Uh, I've left Broadside and Long Strike where they are. Uh, I've moved a Riptide up on top of the landing pad there. Uh, he's got options for shooting around here. We're probably going to go for the Land Raider, but we'll just kind of see how that looks a little bit later on. Uh, the uh, guys with the um, 
Burst Cannon's there, the Stealth Suit Squad. These guys have um, really just formed a bit of a firing squad up against the two lines here. So one to fire at the Thunderwolves, and then one to try and have a go at that Rhino just over on that side. And then the real action has happened a little bit further around. So if we look to the oil refinery there, you'll see the Piranhas move forward. Um, looking at this Rhino down here, going to do the same thing with the Ghost Keel. The Fire Warrior squads followed it up. And the other Fire Warrior squad with the Devilfish, they've hopped out and then the Devilfish has moved forward and round and they've moved forward up to the lines there. Really just trying to take as many wounds off that Rhino early on as we can. Hopefully take it down this turn. There's a lot of firepower looking at that unit there. So hopefully that will be destroyed. Let's go and shoot some stuff and see if that comes true. Well, quite the round of shooting from these guys. Um, the Piranha... Having missed with the Fusion Blast the first time out, I spent a command point to uh, to correct that little issue uh, with a reroll managed to hit and then caused an awful lot of wounds on the Rhino, uh, followed by the Ghost Kill that uh, basically took that Rhino out. Unfortunately, a bunch of very cross Wolfen nipped out of that after it blew up. And that has caused me a bit of a problem because even having fired the Devilfish and fired the fire warriors at uh, the wolf and we haven't really done a lot of damage and in fact i even got the riptide up there to overcharge itself and, and put a shot down there and still didn't cause many uh, casualties at all so we've got one guy there with uh, one wound remaining and then uh, one of them actually or two of them maybe got taken off but it wasn't a particularly good result so they're cross uh, they don't have a transport anymore and I'm presuming they're going to go charging into me unless I do something about it during the course of uh, what's left of this turn so a little bit of thinking to be done down there moving across to the center of the battlefield um, my stealth suit squad um, fired down at the rhino down here and just took one wound off there and then the Celtic squad up here fired down at the Thunderwolves and I think they managed to kill one of the Thunderwolves which was pretty cool. Um, then another one bought it from the Fusion Blaster from the Riptide up there so um, the Heavy Burst Cannon went one way and then the Fusion Blaster went down here the other way and, and took out one of the Wolfen. But the big news of this turn is there's a massive crater here where the Land Raider used to be. Um, thanks to, in fact, there's a lot of the army firing at it. So Long Strike took a shot, the Broadside took a shot, and the uh, um, Crisis Suits up here did actually sterling work given they don't really have the equipment for it. But between them all, actually managed to take out that Land Raider in its entirety. So um, there you go. It just goes to show, I guess, even... Uh, even though vehicles are extremely tough in this edition, they can be removed in a single turn there. Although admittedly, that is half the army, if not more than half the army points wise, shooting down at it. So yeah, pretty good result though. I'm pleased with that. Um, obviously the Thunderwolf down here, we're gonna have to regroup. Uh, and I need to decide what I'm gonna do down here in the assault phase. So I ummed and ahed and figured that if I was gonna sit there and wait, then the only real advantage would be that I'd be able to overwatch. And we've already seen that shooting against these guys is not the most effective thing in the world. Um, so I decided to go in all guns blazing and just basically charge everything. Unfortunately, in the charge phase, the two fire warrior squads at the back that didn't make it into combat. Uh, that did mean that the Piranha, the Ghost Keel, its accompanying drones, and the Devilfish all made it in. Um, but they're not very good in combat, turns out. So we didn't even cause a wound, didn't even scratch these guys at all. We just made them angry. Sufficiently angry to take uh, the piranha out and also to cause, um, what was it, two wounds against the ghost kill. And it was actually going to be worse than that, but thanks to the stim injector, I actually managed to get a couple of those back. So some lucky dice rolling those kept the ghost kill in a reasonably sound state. Kind of hurt losing my land raider, losing my one and my rhinos. So I've abandoned this side of the battlefield for the time being. There's a lot of firepower here. And nothing really can do, well, the Thunderwolf Cavalry can't do anything because nothing's on the ground floor. So the Wolfen have got out of the Rhino. They've moved out their three, moved their seven. They're up onto the landing platform, looking at wrecking the tower world up there. Thunderwolf Cav and the Iron Priest have moved around the bottom of the landing platform. Probably going to advance those in a second, actually. Uh, maybe the same with the Dreadnought as well. Rhino's moved around. They're going to shoot at the Fire Warriors. And then the Wolfen are staying in combat. And they're going to hopefully rip that Ghost Kill a new one. In the shooting phase of the Space Wolves, nothing really happened. Everything kind of missed. So I shot the Grey Hunters down here at the Riptide. Also shot the grenade launchers from the Wolfen at the Riptide. 
Um, Storm Bolters from the Rhino into the Fire Warrior Squad. No damage done at all. The only thing it did, I think, was trusty old Vindicare right up on the uh, building. Shot down into the Stealth Squad down here, killing one of them off. Wolfen made it into combat on top of the landing platform with the Riptide, taken one wound in Overwatch, but did five wounds to the big guy himself. Still alive, still got three left. Down here, the Ghost Kill. Ghost Kill took another wound, so he's still alive on seven. Damn, that's not exactly what I want to happen in combat. I kind of wanted the Ghost Kill dead and I wanted the Riptide dead, but hmm. Anyway, let's go with another round of shooting from the Evil Tower. So the Crisis Squad have jumped down from the building at the top there. Uh, I might shoot them, I might yet advance them towards the objective just behind the bunker there. Fire Warriors have come around the building as well. Again, not quite sure what I'm going to do with those yet. Probably will advance those. The Riptide, well, there's a bit of a debate going on there, but ultimately he's so badly wounded he only gets a four inch movement and that's not enough to get me out of range of the uh, the wolf. And so what I figured is I'm going to back him away and um, move the four inches and then he's within six inches of long strike and the broadside and maybe even those fire warriors as well so when i get charged again next turn i'm going to get uh, the opportunity to overwatch so it's better than nothing obviously he can't necessarily do anything this turn but in the grand scheme of things that's probably the most sensible thing to do similar kind of story over here the back of the battlefield that combat is not going well at all so my devil fish my ghost kill have withdrawn from combat the fire warriors have moved around the side of the building i've left the drones there blocking that little entrance way through so um there's not enough of a gap to get the wolf in through they're going to have to assault those drones so that's going to buy me an extra turn where i'm not going to get assaulted so that's pretty good in the main and then of course the big news is down here and I've elected to bring in via Manta the uh, commander and the uh, crisis squad with the uh, plasma guns. And I'm going to use the Mark Light drones to light up these guys down here and uh, hopefully improve their ballistic skill a little bit. Roll to hit and just uh, see if we can damage some of the guys down here. So in the end I decided to fire the Stealth Suit Squad at the uh, Wolfen and managed to wound two of those guys which is good. Unfortunately the Crisis Squad down here they couldn't see and neither could the Fire Warrior so that's a little bit of a disappointment. However Long Strike and the Broadside could see and they've managed to uh, kill off a couple of guys there as well which is pretty good. Over in the Temple area then the Fire Warrior Squad down here managed to kill uh, another one of the Wolfen. These guys down the bottom here were obscured from being able to see the wolf and so instead they fired at the rhino but managed to uh, only hit once and then not to actually cause any damage at all. Of course the ghost kill cannot partake having withdrawn from combat which is a little bit of a shame. Similar story of course the riptide that couldn't get involved in that combat as well. The positive news from this turn however is the fact that the commander plus the crisis squad down here that arrived late in the game via Manta have managed to eliminate the squad down here completely so that leaves that objective reasonably free though of course we have got another squad up here that uh, may have to make their choices about whether they're going to hang around or maybe split off the character and move down that way who knows. Uh, but that's good news anyway we've eliminated that squad and uh, removed a bit of resistance from this corner of the table. So the Space Wolves now trying to push up the battlefield hard. Dreadnought has moved up. Iron Priest has moved up. He's going to go into the drones just to eliminate them probably. Wolfen have moved up. I'm probably going to advance them as well just so that I definitely within one inch of those little uh, Fire Warrior squad because they're going to get mullered. Rhino with the Hove Bolter is going to shoot. Probably go in there first. Wolfen have moved. They're looking at the Stealth Suit squad down there. I've left this other one because the Rune Priest is within 18 inches, so Jaws of the Word Wolf and Smite will come into play. The two remaining Thunderwolf Cavalry have gone underneath the landing platform. They've got a, I think it's like a 3 inch, 2 inch charge into the back of the Riptide. Nobody was in, within 6 inches for that whole overwatching shenanigans that Tau do. Um, and the Commander is in line of sight of the Vindicare up here, so I'm hoping for a nice sniper shot. 
At the end of the movement phase, I advanced the Dreadnought. I advanced the Wolfen, just to make definitely sure they're going to make it into combat. Uh, Hellfrost Pistol from the Iron Priest shot into the drones, killing one of them off. Bolters from the Rhino shot at the Fire Warriors, killing one off. Um, and really... Oh, and Jaws of the Word Wolf uh, failed to do any damage because these guys have got an 8-inch movement. So basically, you take two dice, you roll. Whatever you roll over their movement, that's how many mortal wounds you get. So if I'd have got a 9, it would have been a 1, 10, 2, etc, etc. Et but I didn't, but I killed one off thanks to Smite. So he's dead, very dead. The Vindicare Assassin, all the way up here at the top of the battlefield did what he does best he took a shot down at the Tau commander he hit he wounded no cover modifiers no invun saves allowed he took three wounds it's a shame i didn't roll a six to wound him because that becomes d6 and i rolled a six so he'd be dead right now but oh, that's how that goes so we're going to go into charge phase wolfen are going to go into the stealth squad thunderwolf calf are going into there uh, Rhino's going to go in first to soak up the overwatch and then the Wolfrin are going in after. So the combat didn't start off overly well. I've lost a Wolfrin down here. Um, yeah, did no damage back to that stealth suit squad. Some terrible dice rolling from me. However, the Riptide has gone. Thunderwolf Cavalry smashed it in the face and killed them. I did take one wound during overwatch. Now, you've got to consolidate back to your closest, well, closest enemy unit. These guys are 9 inches, and these guys are 9 inches. Now, there's nothing that says that I can't pull back towards the stealth suit squad here, because they're the equal distance apart, so it's all good. So, yeah, whatever. And then down here, the Fire Warrior squad died horrendously to the attacks from the Rhino, and majority of the ones on the Wolfen. And the last drone has gone from the Iron Priest, so he's heading up towards the Devilfish, and the Rhino and the Wolfen are now locking the next Fire Warrior squad up in combat. So having learnt the lessons of the Vindicare Assassin, I'm hoping I've moved the commander into a position where he can't be seen. I'm pretty sure he can't be seen from there. And the Crisis Suit Squad have moved upwards towards that objective as far as they possibly can. Brought the Mark Light drones around as well. They're going to bolster their shooting into the squad that's just occupying that building just up there. Second Crisis Suit Squad, they've hopped on top of the building. They have learnt very quickly that uh, Thunderwolf can't climb. Uh, so we're going to hang out on the roof there and uh, just stay safe, kids. Uh, however, the Fire Warrior squads there, uh, they're, they're uh, potentially meet. Um, they have got line of sight on. You can't see them. They're underneath the building just there, but they have got line of sight there through to shoot at that um, Thunderwolf squad just underneath there. Uh, the two sets of stealth suit squads, one of them's tied up in combat, but the other one have moved up to towards the edge of the building there so they can shoot at the room priest just on top of the building up there as we look to the space occupying the rear of the landing pad a long strike is staying put and so is the broadside underneath it that little uh, fire base is staying where it is uh, got a little plan there they've both got smart missile systems that don't need line of sight and ignore cover so they're going to be dropping shells at the thunderwolf that you maybe just about can see just underneath there whilst Simultaneously firing their rail guns at the Dreadnought, which is kicking about in uh, free space down here. My ghost kills hopped over the building as well to, tick, uh, to take a shot at those uh, or that Dreadnought just there. Uh, my Devilfish, yeah, well, it's badly burnt and scalded. There's no way of getting out of that situation, so I've just left it where it is. Uh, rather than take the hit on the shooting, I'm just going to leave it where it is and hope that it does some damage in shooting. And these Fire Warriors are... Uh, well, they're scuppered, they're in combat, and that's all there is to it. So uh, they won't be taking part in the shooting phase, which is coming up right now. The plasma shots from the crisis suits down here managed to kill three of the guys in the building. They've passed their morale, however. And then the combined shooting of the fire warriors down there, plus the smart missile systems from the two uh, units you can see in the building there, I managed to kill one of the Thunderwolf Cav guys off, which is nice. Then the stealth suit squad on top of the launch pad that's not engaged in combat fired up at the room priest and managed to cause a wound up there, which again is quite nice. And the ghost keel managed to cause some damage with the uh, fusion blaster and managed to take four wounds off the dreadnought down here. Although he's a tough old cookie, I forget that he's got a three up invun save. So it takes a reasonably unlucky dice roll for any actual aggro to be caused. 
And down here, the devil fish opened up at the iron priest and caused just a single wound um, with all of those shots. So not so good there, unfortunately. So the little combat here on the landing pad was uh, kind of a score drawish. One of the self suit guys died and the wolf and took a wound so we'll, we'll call that vaguely a draw uh, the sales guys have passed their morale so that's going to continue to uh, rumble on for a little bit longer um not such a great result down here the uh, wolf made swift work of the fire warrior squad down there they're all dead uh, so they're consolidating now up towards the ghost keel not looking too promising for him later on space was looking to push in the advantage in this left hand flank of the battlefield the ghost kill is exposed the dreadnought and the wolfen have moved up towards it the rhino has moved down looking at shooting at the fire warriors iron priest has moved up towards the devil fish looking at killing that off wolfen still in combat down here thunderwolf cavalry that was underneath the landing platform has moved his 10 inches looking at going into the commander i've got no line of sight from a vindicator this turn um, but they're within six of the Wolfen, so he can get to re-roll his charge range. Now, there's going to be a lot of Overwatch shenanigans, so I'm sure I'll probably lose him in in that. Rune Priest is going to uh, smite and Jaws of the Word Wolf, that stealth squad. A Hellfrost Pistol from the Iron Priest shot at the Devilfish, taking off three wounds. So that's good, he's got nine left. Uh, smite from the Rune Priest up here. Killed one guy off with a mortal wound and put another mortal wound on another guy. Vindicare Assassin hit down here john rolled a six to save him minus three six up damn so that's all good uh bolters from the rhino shot at the fire warriors no damage done bolters from the two gray hunters in here into the crisis suit squad no damage done so it's going to be over to combat dreadnought wolfen going in iron priest going in thunderwolf cav going in oh, it's nine inches so i need an eight Charge phase didn't start overly the best. Thunderwolf Cavalry guy was pulled down as he ran in because of the Tau Overwatch from all of the buddies over here. John got quite lucky with his dice roll and did quite a lot of damage. Um, stealth Suit Squad were finally killed off by the Wolfen and they made it into combat with the second Stealth Suit Squad. Ghost Kill is gone. That's been destroyed. Basically, the, Fenri the Fenrisian Axe off the Dreadnought. Oh my god. Three hits. No, uh, yeah, I've got three hits, three wounds, and they did D6 damage each, and I rolled 13. So that went bye-bye. Um, and then the Delphish is alive with five wounds remaining. Fire Warrior Squad has moved up to counter the Rhino, um, but that's basically it for that element of movement. Again, the Firebase staying put where they are in that building. Um, crisis squad there doggedly hanging onto the roof although the thunder wolf was gone um it's still quite comforting being on the roof for some reason uh, down here commander's moved into the objective squatting there he's out of line the sight of the assassin which is a scary prospect so that's good and then the other crisis squad these guys are going to start picking on that squad just there um yeah i'm just hope i'm not necessarily going after that objective per se but i'm just thinking about removing space walls from it just to deny those victory points so a highly successful round of shooting there the uh, broadside plus long strike managed to take the rhino out from the center of the battlefield down here as you look at it right now the crisis squad up here fired their missile pods at the rune priest that was previously occupying the top of that building he's dead and then if we swing around the board just a little bit then what you'll see down here is the crisis squads and again they've opened up and destroyed the squad that was uh, clinging onto that building so yeah three units taken down pretty successful round i would say the warfen managed to eradicate the remaining stealth suit squads on top of the landing pad and consolidated uh, three inches straight down onto the deck which potentially looks interesting when we consider what's over here not so great from my point of view and over here the devil fish is clinging onto life but it has just two wounds remaining now so and cause no damage uh, to the space wolf so not looking too good there either limited on options now running out of units very very quickly wolfen that came down three inches from that building from the last combat 
move seven and I've ran five right on the crisis suits the idea is is getting into these guys kill them hopefully consolidating into the commander tying him up um, over here next wolfen squad right the way over here same again move seven round five into the fire warriors maybe in towards them i think they're going to be closest though so they'll probably have to go in there the broadside's taken three wounds that was shots from the vindicare up all the way up on here three wounds that guy's got six wounds now that broadside damn Hellfrost pistol in the shooting in the shooting phase shot at the devilfish destroyed it AP minus four D three damage I rolled six so it's three damage so he only had two wounds left he was dead um, yeah over to assault are they going to be able to survive Overwatch this is going to be the key thing now if my two Wolfen squads can survive Overwatch and get in that's good if they die game over So right down the back of the battlefield, I lost one of the Wolfen going into combat. Killed one of the crisis suits off and put a wound on the other one. It's not enough. Not what I wanted to happen, really. Uh, well, over the other side. Basically, I lost one Wolfen to the Overwatch from pretty much everything over here. And then murdered the Fire Warrior squad and they've gone towards the broadside. So it's over to John's turn five. So having been a little bit roughed up by the wolf and my crisis squad has elected to leave combat and move away. The drones weren't involved in that combat so they've had a free move over towards the objective over here. And the plan really is to get the commander to shoot down at the wolf in here and see if we can take those remaining two, wall, two wounds even away and uh, hopefully remove him from play. And the only other bit of movement is over here. The crisis squad has come down from the building there. And again, the plan is to hopefully eliminate the wolf and during the course of this shooting phase and consolidate the uh, two objectives that we've got uh, over this side of the table. So the commander managed to eradicate the wolf and over there, which is uh, which is good news, I guess. And then looking at the other wolf from just over here, then uh, the combined firepower of the broadside and long strike managed to take those two guys out as well. So two units deleted in the shooting phase, which is, um, yeah, exactly what I wanted to see, really. And with that, that is the end of the game. There is no way back for the Space Wolves. I've got the Venerable Dreadnought holding on to objective. Uh, the Iron Priest down there is just in line breaker. And I've got my Vindicare left. So I get four victory points to John's. Three, six, nine, plus line breaker, plus first blood. So it's uh, 11, four on victory points. That was a good fun game. Let's head over to the post-game review. So then guys, that was a really good fun game to play. Um, Tau, Tau is still tough. That's not the first time I've said that and it probably won't be the last either. Some really lucky dice rolling from John, though. Yeah, yeah, some definitely saving throws. Very saving good. throws, and just five and six is going into um, assault and Overwatch with marker lights plus in one, so he needs fives. He's just rolling them left, right, and centre. It's a right pain. Um, Space Wolf list. It's okay. It's still quite fluffy. It's it's quite tough. Wolfen is still nails. Vindicare Assassin is mm. ninety points. Ninety points for that guy, and he's worth every single penny. He really is. I recommend getting one if you haven't got one already and you run a Space Marine Army. Um, I'm not going to go to Gibraltar and I'm not going to win it. Never in a million years. And I'm not going to go to any tournament with this list and win it. Um, I am going to go to a tournament with a dirt list at some point, but that means building it. Now I am. I've got like five Predators, Rebute, Gulliman, um, three Storm Talents and some other utter rubbish in my list for 2,000 points that's just filth. And I will run that at some point, but it won't be this year and it probably won't be next year either. But that was a good fun game to play. The Wolves held up quite well. I think there was a couple of turns in there where it turned for the Tau. There was one turn, I think you destroyed like three or four of my units. Mm. Land Raider. <laughs> yeah, that was quite amazing to be honest. Even I wasn't expecting that. There was a lot of firepower went in there, but you don't expect to take a Land Raider out in one turn. It was half your army. Half your army mm. shot at the Land Raider and it just went pop. Which, Land Raiders are tough. With a two-up save, mm. they're hard. I mean, first turn i took like was it like eight nine wounds off your six wounds i think it was in the end mm -hmm. off the riptide and you thought oh here we go land raiders pretty good no towel bang dead 
Annoying, really annoying. They can deal with armor really, really well. But that was a good game. It was nice to actually play test my list. This is a slightly different list I took to the Northwest Open. I got rid of the Stormwolf Floor and put the Land Raider in. Um, I need a drop pod from a Dreadnought. Because you can't put them in normal Dreadnoughts anymore. As far as uh, Dreadnoughts into drop pods. You can't put them into normal drop pods anymore. That's what I meant. Right. Um, because you can't, it doesn't seem that you can, it doesn't read that way from the rules. And Forge Lord don't make the drop pod for the Dreadnoughts anymore because the mould broke and they haven't replaced it. Sad times. Anyway, um, but yeah, that was a really good fun game. I hope you did enjoy that. Did you enjoy that, John? What was your oh, unit of the game? Unit of the long strike, long strike, long strike. Oh, long strike is yeah. tough. Well, never used well. to take him in the last edition, but there's something about it in this one that just seems to add up really, really well. He's a really good uh, unit. I like taking spot missile system with him as well because you've got more shots and of course then you're getting the advantages of um, the rolls to wound and you've got the advantages of the extra ballistic skill more you know more so than taking drones so yeah smart missile system on long strike thoroughly recommended yeah very good really good fun to play against again kind of um but yeah no it's always nice to get tau on uh, at some point i will beat them i did beat them in our first game of eighth edition yeah i gave you that victory but that's because <laughs> that's because you cocked up yeah. um but yeah, no, you know, we're still learning eighth edition. I'm mm. sure a lot of people like you guys out there are as well. Um I actually started to enjoy it more. When it first came out, I was unsure about eighth edition. I enjoyed seventh, minus all the formation shenanigans. Mm. Um I enjoyed seventh edition. I thought it was quite good. But you know, we've been playing this a long time. Eighth edition is quite similar to second edition, which is when we first came into mm. this. Um so we're kind of used to it a little bit, but it, it's it's just getting your head around some of the rules. It's definitely easier. I think it's definitely quicker to play. It's definitely quicker, yeah. It yeah. is definitely quicker to play, especially when you're town to elite units like Land Raiders left, right and centre. That makes <laughs> a game a hell of a lot quicker. Mean that, but yeah, that does help too. Yes, that does help. So what do you guys think to the tournament list? Um, like I said, it's not a Thilf tournament list. It is quite fluffy. And I'm going to go over there and enjoy myself and have a great time and uh, have great fun in Gibraltar. Shame you can't come actually, Johnny. You'll mm. need to come one, yeah. If Pardo will have you. and um, But yeah, so I'm not going to I'm not going to go over and win, but I'm just going to go over and have a good laugh, and that's the majority of it for me, to be quite honest. Um, John, that was good fun with your towel. Are you going to add anything to your towel? Are you going to change anything? I'm seriously looking at aircraft for towel. Um, I Ooh. really like the Barracuda, but I, I haven't really checked out the rules in a long time. I know it used to be considered to be one of the more powerful flyers in the game. Um, but yeah, the, the bomber maybe looks quite interesting. I just need to have a look at the points really and figure it out. But... It doesn't seem to really be missing anything, to be honest with you. In fact, if anything, no. now I've got too much because of 2K list and I'm still leaving half the stuff in a box. So You don't get much of 2K anymore. You don't, you don't get much miniatures for that. I've actually got a third squad of Wolfen, thanks to one of our lovely viewers out there who had a set and didn't want them, so has given them to me. If you don't want any towel, then send it my way. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a third squad of Wolfen as well to, uh, to get sorted out and get painted up. Um, and three more Thunderwolf Cavalry. But Thunderwolf Cav are not as good anymore. I really don't think they are. Storm Shields help. Um, and they've got three wounds. They've lost two inches from their movement. They used to move 12, they now move 10. Um, they just don't, to me, I don't know why, but they just don't seem as tough. They're kind of like bikes, which my Orc bikes don't seem as good in 8th edition either. So I don't know. Maybe they have been nerfed a little bit. I don't know. I need to play more. I need to play more with my Orcs. Um... Yeah, and then try that. And I really want to add to my orcs now as well. So anyway, we're going off on a tangent. I'm going off on a rant. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please leave us a comment. Uh, what do you think to the tournament list? What do you think to John's Tau? Any suggestions what he can add to it? The yeah, flyers yeah, and all yeah. that kind of stuff? I've got some crew in the box. Is, uh, is it worth painting them? Oh, yeah, do crew. Do crew, because I like crew. They're squidgy and die nicely. Um, why not subscribe if you haven't done so already? Uh, don't forget to click the little notification icon as well so you never miss any of our content when we load it up. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.